Ironwood Games. This is Andrew, and today I am looking at um, Arcanium, Rise of Akan. Um, this is still an early access uh, version. I think it's uh, supposed to. They're uh, going to launch sometime this month in December. Uh, was what I heard. I haven't played this in a while. I got this early access. Oh months ago, almost six months ago at least, probably, maybe even a year ago. I uh, played it a little bit, and they've made a lot of changes. They keep making a lot of changes, so um, I may or may not even know what's going on anymore. So let's try and get in here and see what we get in a run um, of this. Alright, so yeah, this is... Um, different. We had this uh, region, this starting province was open, um, but we didn't have this progress bar or anything before. So we're playing Ar Aranax, the Brood Queen is the kind of warrior. Alright, then we didn't have, yeah, all of this is new. Never had a difficulty. So let's go with normal. Um, this game was always um, challenging, I would say. Um, on that. Alright, so Shinzo used to be unlocked as one of the kind of starting characters, and it looks like he's no longer unlocked, and instead we have Leon um, here. So um, that would be part of the reason that my Aurora and Melody um, are level 5, and Leon is just level 1. I don't know if that was a balancing thing, if it's uh, going to be better or not, so it We've got, obviously, you can unlock um, new kind of heroes and what you start with. I'm not sure about these heirlooms um, as we play through. So let's go. If I recall, Shinzo was kind of a tank, um, and he did some shields um, and things. Aurora is a, like, fire mage, and Milady, 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 I... Um, was I want to say like a rogue uh, type um, character. I don't know if they've, again, balanced some of that, changed that. Uh, on this, it's gone through a number of iterations and changes. Um, I felt like the times I did play it, the changes were always for the better. Um, on that, it's been interesting and fun kind of being part of the uh, involved in the early access or getting to see the the progression. Uh, I wish I had more time. The developers are very active on their uh, Discord. Um, they're constantly getting community feedback, doing events. Um, so I would definitely say, you know, shout out to them. Uh, good job for, for doing that. I wish I had more time to be more active. Um, but I've just enjoyed it. I um, feel like it was definitely worth kind of buying into the early access early access uh, to get to experience it and kind of see that process. All right, so here we've got some new things. Each chapter has its own storyline. Defeat the super elite enemy at each colored shard battle to progress to the province and battle Aranax. Corruption meter, we had that before. And then... Um, does it defeat the villains there first before we can close it up? So they had this progression uh, kind of previously and they've changed this some color code um things we had a daytime progression it wasn't as uh pronounced i think they had the same phases here but we didn't really kind of see what they were you just kind of went through them uh so that's kind of nice um and we'll see how else this goes um so we'll start with some gold we'll start with this we'll see what else happens here as we now it is uh, randomly generated as far as I know um, on this, so each playthrough is going to be a little bit different. Um, and again, it's not kind of meant to be a single run, but to build up um, and go. As you can saw earlier, I have uh, level 5 already in my other two characters and only level 1 in Leon. Alright, so we've got a storyline uh, piece slice. Another forest crawler falls at your feet, adding to the scattered bodies of its brother. You hear screams in the distance, as well as the distinct sounds of claws scratching the dirt. More crawlers. Uh, so there's a lot of spiders in this province. 
uh, from at least my previous playthroughs, looks like it's still the same. Your scout has brought urgent intel passed through the forest that Silk Weaver, Silk Weaver Silfar has emerged from her den. She's got a bottomless appetite and the corruption won't help. You must find her and stop her. Okay, hero has gone missing and their trail is growing cold, which is a mentor node. Report suggests an outpost is in danger, an outpost node. Um, so I don't know what either of these options do. This one doesn't have a pop-up. This one does have a pop-up. Looks like maybe it, if I go over the bold word, it does. So an outpost. Purchase minions. Minions offer a nice balance of damage and defense protecting the hero in their lane. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Mentor. Purchase hero abilities. Another mighty hero willing to teach you their abilities for a small donation. Um, let's go with the outpost node. That sounds interesting. Okay, so this is our next objective. Um, so that's good. Uh, this is where we're at right now. And then you have um, some explore options and some battle options. So in previous iterations, they had, uh, instead of just one specific node, you had some, kind of some choices of your nodes and you had to defeat three of them to open up the boss that was, I believe, usually in the center. Um, so it looks like now there's, you know, more of a progression, uh, kind of an order of things. So let's kind of work in that way. Um, so let's explore first. Uh, you found an area yet unaffected by the corruption. You feel a sense of peace and harmony here, releasing some of the stress. From it. So we gained three Anador stones. Uh, which are used to unlock our Anador heroes. So we've got three province stones. Uh, so that's interesting. So we could go to battle, we could go to the capital. Um, so it looks like... We can teleport here, um, but we have to do 19 steps in between them. The other part you'll see now, it's our noon step. Um, I think we went from morning uh, to noon because we took one step. I believe if we go plus two here, it's going to move us uh, to our evening. And um, it used to be at least that at uh, night, the enemies were tougher. Um, and a little bit harder to fight. But let's find out. So let's go to this battle here. Um, okay. Daytime bonus. So I guess there's two steps in each one. Or every three steps, the day shifts to night and back again. Yeah, so I'm not sure um, on that. We'll see. Uh, here we've got our enemies. Enemies respawn after one turn. So this is one of the things that's hard about them is uh, they respawn. So depending on your uh, goal. And this one, I think it was defeat three enemies. So we just need to destroy three enemies. Um, and then we can choose our starting positions. This will be fine. Let's start the battle. Um, so here we have the enemies kind of took their turn. They set up or kind of project their moves and then we can kind of decide what we want to do uh, to count this. So right now I'm going to take four damage here and four damage here. Um, and uh, let's see. Shield steel. I don't know. Uh, some of this is different. Deal six damage in a line. Um... So, and then I have, uh, I think, six action points between all these, so you can see what they cost. Uh, so, cleaves are good. I believe those are going to go side to side. Yeah, you'll see it. So, I go across in my lane. It's going to deal damage on the left and the right as well. So, being in the center here for these cleaves um, is going to be important. Because um, it looks like he's yeah, going to gain shield. And do that. All right, so we've got four left. I'm going to throw a fireball at this guy. Um, I want to 
want to save that. Let's dash. So dash lets you change positions here. Normally it costs um, an action point to change, but since dash is a zero, um, it's free. And then I'm going to deal the other six damage here to kill the first enemy. He will respawn in a turn, but again, we just have to destroy three enemies, so it's fine. It prevents the damage from being dealt to him. Um, Fury, I'm not sure this must be a new piece here. Fury is used player here is ultimate cards. Uh, okay, yes. So ultimate cards, um, they used to be a different processor. After they took so much damage, they can um, Ultimates. And the ultimates are usually really good abilities. Let's deal some damage and shield steal. So I got two shield uh, from him. So we're not gonna do anything with Aurora because she's here kind of, kind of free. Uh, we're gonna spend our points here and I think we're gonna dash and gain an immune because yeah, incoming damage is reduced to zero. So that again, we're trying to keep our uh, health right, um, keep our guys alive as much as possible. All right, this. Deal five damage and definitely kill him. Uh, we'll deal some damage in a line. So one thing we can do um, here that's going to be interesting is we're going to intercept to dash here to switch their positions, and then I'm going to pounce to switch their positions. So now I have Aurora who can deal. Uh, damage still um, is going to deal. I'm going to use the two just to use my resources to the best um, ability. I'm going to take a little bit of damage. Just to, oh, he has an immune actually, so I don't think I will take damage here. I will take a little bit more damage on Aurora. Um, at one point in the development, the damage persisted between your battles, and then at one point they had changed that so it. Um, didn't your, your units would heal between battles so I don't know at this point kind of what we're gonna get um, on that um, so burn is interesting it's one of those abilities that they take damage at the end of the round um, and then it's a stack so it uh, counts down uh, usually so what we'll do is we'll bounce here and we will a uh, vicious strike and that should give him perfect. All right. So we'll continue. We get a new ability. Um, and again, we can see which hero uh, gets it. That's interesting. Lava Bolt. Um, Let's take Lava Bolts, see what happens, and then we can equip it uh, right away. So they've up the use have to go in and equip everything afterwards. Looks like they've made some updates. Again, that's kind of that idea that uh, it's great where they've taken that feedback um, from players and um, get this. So I know there's a lot of things. There's corruption here. Um, as you go, we get more corruption, and then it makes it uh, battles. Uh, get harder um, across there like this is a an elite battle um, that's corrupted I'm just gonna go here um, to evening all right an event here you find a hut of twigs and leaves a sign off the druid is in you enter an old hedgehog with a twisted staff welcomes you I can treat your wounds he says pushing some spectacles up his nose assuming you can afford it Spend 75 to duplicate a non-starter ability of your choice. 
Um, so the only non-starter I have right now is that um, fire one. So I don't think it's worth the 75 gold. Um, in previous runs, gold was hard to come by and pretty important for healing and other things. So I think we will hold on to that. Just skip that. We'll go to this town here. Um, and see what we can get. So that's definitely interesting. All three of my heroes can use this one. Um, which is pretty good. This leeching smash is really looking good though. Um, and then if I believe, I think the progression is green, blue, uh, purple, as far as kind of like common, uncommon, epic, or uh, regular, epic, legendary. I, I don't remember what the exact levels are. Um, so purple is definitely better. Consuming Rage is interesting. Um, for drawing, you lose some health. Um, we have to draw some more cards. Uh, for now, though, I think I'm just going to take this Lifesteal. That looks really good. Um, be at 48 gold. I don't think I need this one. Uh, what does upgrade let me do? Oh, I don't have enough gold to upgrade, so it doesn't matter. All right. Uh, in the forge, we can get artifacts. I guess I should have looked at all the things first. Um, we got some abilities. The alchemist. Oh, with some potions. Uh, potions usually give you a stacked effect. Um, and then the inn lets you restore all of your uh, hero's health. All right, so let's get out of here. Let's go into the backpack. And this is where we have a new ability here. So we... Drag it out. This is your starting deck, um, and this is kind of what you get to uh, what you're drawing out of. And so, again, as you kind of go on and level them up, um, you open up new things, and then you can always kind of refine it by taking some things out. Um, and that shows you kind of how your guys play. So, let's go back. Um, I really don't want to do another fight in the middle of the night, so let's just explore another thing. We found an item. It's twilight. So we'll go to the camp. Um, my health is pretty good. I don't want to restore uh, 12 health. I think that's not worth it. Let's try and upgrade a card and see what we can upgrade. Um... I think upgrading cards is a new feature. I don't know that we have done that before. Uh, so select a card of legendary or less to upgrade. So I think we can't do this one because it's legendary. Because um, it doesn't show up here where like Lava Bolt, we get Lava Bolt plus. Uh, deals six damage. Instead of just the four. Um, I think I want to just do it to our uh, vicious strike. I I don't know. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time worrying about kind of all of these or what's best. Again, I'm just trying to figure out. So we're here. We can now go here um, to our first main quest. Our main story quest, and I think we'll battle Silk Weaver Silthar. So it has nature resistance, which nature damage is reduced, and then has 80 health. And all right, so we've got our little storyline here. We won't uh, waste all of our time. And then you have options here. We can just battle straight forward, or we can break open the door to get an item. Um, and give our enemies more health. I don't want to do that. I just want to battle uh, straight up right now. It is an easy battle. Um, I just want to take it easy here since it's been a while since I've done this one. All right, so again, we'll start here. That's fine. Let's start our battle. Uh, they have a little thing here. 
Um, so we can see the ability she's going to use is this sticky web. Uh, root uh, keeps your um, uh, your characters from moving, so they can't swap their position. So that does is kind of bad for um, her, but I'm not too worried about it. The other part of this, um, these hatchlings um, that come out, is you have to deal with them. So that, remember that line damage means it'll go through right now. I have to kill uh, the hatchling first before I can deal with her. Um, but that's alright. So we'll deal some damage to her. I'm going to try and deal as much damage as I can um, to these other guys. I get my goal is of course to take down the super elite here um, in the center and unless the things have changed again quite a lot um, these guys will regenerate again uh, within each turn uh, so leeching smash sounds fun um, and then we can do this and see things. The uh, bosses you'll notice have you know extra abilities. This has corpse hatch every turn. It's going to summon that hatchling, uh, so it's a pain to kind of get through and do that. The other thing, if I recall right, yeah, the uh, arrow means it's a ranged attack, which means it can. Uh, go side to side, you can go into the next lane um, where the sword is a melee attack, you have to go in your lane um, oh I see, okay so they cost different amounts of fury to to do them. The Pyro Burst is one of the best ones, because um, it deals 12 damage and stuns. Okay, so I see. So we can choose which uh, character gets those instead of it. out before um, the way it was. Okay. So yeah, you see, we keep getting these. Uh, we're going to keep getting them every turn, and it's going to be a pain. Um, and so this Fireball that does 9 damage... Um, you see, this is where I'm kind of trying to kill the hatchlings first. Um, this is in a line, which means I can't do that. Um, I wish there was a... better one. So let's, uh, change the... He gets an immune, which will help stop some of that damage and then we can go in a line um, in a line means it will kind of uh, roll over right some trample damage kind of uh, effect and that hatchling is not going to be dead uh, I would love to do that one thing we could do Yeah. Um, I hate it, but uh, we'll just do this in a cleave. Deal some damage there, and then end our turn. So you'll see this guy took his last damage, um, and he's going to respawn next turn. So you do get a little bit of a reprieve, but again, you want to be focusing on getting rid of the uh, pretty big guy here. Uh, oh. This is a pain. Alright, so he respawns, so I'm just going to kill this guy. Deal some damage here. Um, I'm going to do a strike and a cleave. Intercept here. 
counts here. And should protect his energy. I will grab my pyro burst now. Um, since I can do 14 right to him. Um, and he's taking additional damage and he's still got that fire damage. And then you can see he's stunned, so he won't get to um, take an action on his next turn. Um, has to take a turn off for the, the stun. Um, and now again, we're back to where we uh, were. So let's see. Vicious Strike is five piercing damage. Let's do that. Let's roll over here. Uh, let's do some damage. Damage and scorch. All right. Um. First boss in the kind of this whole area, right? I think there's going to be four boss battles altogether. Um, so let's see. I'm going to do leeching to get some life. All right, vicious strike uh, is back as the one we upgraded. So that's interesting. So let's do this uh, vicious strike to deal that and. Scorch, and let's see, we've got Anti-Strike 3, uh, we'll deal 4 damage 3 times, I believe. So we can use kind of either one, let's get Bladestorm, let's do that. The Expend means it doesn't get shuffled back to the deck, since it's the ultimate. Um, that's what happens, sometimes you have Expends, they are one use per battle. Um, and that. All right, so that took care of him. Continue. All right, gain five Anador stones used to unlock Anador heroes. So they must cost a certain amount of stones because we're getting, but then we've got eight already, so they're going by. All right, we can get an artifact. Uh, gain two shields whenever you draw a card. The healing and shielding you apply is increased by one. That's definitely interesting. Draw one card whenever you empty your hand once per turn. Um, wow, so that's interesting, and that I think I'm gonna take this wood pipe. Uh, that seems interesting. I'm gonna give it to um, our tankiest guy here. Um, on, oh, and then we've gotta get an ability here. Um, deal six damage, interrupt. Which does what? Force the target to play a new card and discard the currently queued card. Um, so they still get a turn, it just changes their tactic. Uh, deal six damage, draw two if lethal. That's definitely interesting. Um, let's take that. That, Although I do love the um, arrows. Uh, vulnerable increases all other damage by X. Let's take Kuda Girl, that sounds fun. Again, let's not let's equip it. Um, let's try and not spend too much time making agonizing over decisions. All right, gore and black spider blood drip from every surface in the aftermath of that brutal battle. Silthar's ruptured remains will make an effective scarecrow for any of Aranax's other broodlings nearby. The mercenaries recognize your incredible skill and offer to join your party in defeating Aranax. Unlocked outpost. So we'll continue to the outpost. Okay, so these are cards that instead of abilities having effects they summon minions uh that sit in front of you and soak up attacks like we saw with that uh spider makes the little uh, hatchling um these are interesting i haven't seen some of these what's promote from absorb the attack and health from any minions this minion is replacing okay so they um, it'll be 2 plus whatever the previous one was, and 2 plus whatever the previous one was. Okay. Um, and then 
block makes you untargetable. I like this Sunspire Knight, um, but it does cost three. Um, someone gains immune results. Oh, okay. Let's see. Some of these, so let's. Maybe they haven't implemented that. Um, it's interesting since we don't have anybody else right now. I think the infiltrator promote ability doesn't um, do anything. Let's just take the recruit. Um. And we'll figure out who to give that to uh, for now. I guess we could come back. I guess we can get them both, huh? Um, let's take them both. Because we can always come back to the outpost and spend more gold later and get all of them. Um, I guess. I don't know if they refill in the outpost or not. Alright, back. Alright, our storyline uh, continues. Not a moment after your party settles down to revel in your victory. Pathfinder Swift Foot Steps. Pathfinder Swiftfoot steps through the door and glances in your direction. I hope you're ready for a lot more spiders, he says as he arrives at your table. Queen Aranax has charged her head hatch mother, Noxia, with the task of creating new hatching grounds all across Anador. If we don't intervene, the spider army will easily double in size. A map provided by the scout marks the two most ideal locations for the growth of a new spider colony. If you act quickly, Noxia can be defeated before even breaking ground. If not, all the trees of Anador may become a breeding ground. So we can get a trader node, uh, or we can get artifacts, or we can get a village node uh, where we would be able to heal. Um, let's carry a village node. So this is definitely interesting. The um, kind of some of these changes here where we can uh, choose what kind of node we get. We see we got our first part of the main quest um, is done. Let's go in. Let's not forget to um, put these in. Who do we want? Let's give them to our um, sneaky swordsman here. And then we have an item. And I think we gave the carved wood pipe. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Um, so we're going to go here. Again, every time it turns into night, you see we get more corruption. Um, shards. I don't have anything that I want to do here. I just don't want to have extra battles right now. Um, and let's try and get to Noxia. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Okay, so we can get extra gold at the cost of corrupting the more of the area, or we can just battle her. Uh, let's just battle her. Let's see again. So our goal again is just to destroy the super elite. Okay, that sounds fine. whenever you draw a card. I have no idea if this is for just our regular draws um, or if it has to be an extra draw. Um, it doesn't look like I gained any shields for that starting draw, the opening draw, but I have no idea. Um, So we'll see. Let's see what happens. Let's fireball. Uh, 
fireball, uh, leeching smash, and end our turn. All right, so this, she's moved around here. Um, this hatch surrogate made a Minion, and then they swap behind them. So that's definitely interesting. Uh, six damage in the line is good because it's roll five here and then roll over. Uh, let's do that again. Uh, let's intercept and Crusader Strike. Again, I'm focusing as much of my uh, damage on Noxia as I can. You can take out the minions. They do regenerate, um, and it gives you a little bit of a reprieve. But, oops, that was definitely not what I wanted to do. Um, oh, well. They line up with the characters, and I didn't realize that. I was used to Aurora far left here. Regeneration whenever an enemy minion dies in its lane. Um, I don't know, an enemy minion though would be. I, I don't know. Um, not sure where that is coming from. Let's find out. These are um, negatives that they put in. You expend it, but you have to add. Uh, so you can't draw new cards until you get rid of it. Um, it doesn't cost you anything, but you add a random three negatives, which is terrible. Uh, let's deal three damage and a cleave. Uh, let's put my guy out here. Damage, see what we can do, and I guess. 
gas we can deal with fire. And then apply some more burn. Um, so getting these stacks up is nice because it's like, you know, four, three, two, one. Um, the higher you get the stacks, the more you can burn. Uh, the more damage they take over time. to get Aurora to live since we killed off the minion here. But she is so close to dead. Um, along with Melody. I like to call her Melody. So let's see. Yeah, this one is definitely need to take care of these um, other guys so they stop giving the regenerate buff to Noxia. Uh, but that's burst before we're dead. defeated. Alright, so it looks like in at some point in one of these updates the um your characters as soon as you lose one of your characters, uh you get a game over. Uh, at one point, I think you could, as long as you didn't lose all three in the same battle, uh, they would come back. And then at another point, you had a certain number of times they would die. Um, kind of of that. So that's definitely a change that they've made. I like this uh, post run screen. It's very interesting to see the uh, levels and what they've gained um, and where they're going. Um, this is definitely different than what we had before. Um, so these are, you can see their, I think the effects they get, the cards they get in this. Um, and then at each level they get new either abilities or it used to be the cards would um, upgrade, upgrade and you could Um, choose your kind of starting deck, uh, which still may be the case. I haven't really explored some of that. And then it looks like um, we opened some kind of artifact, and I don't know uh, what that means. So let's see our details. Interesting. Uh, the cards we cast, the artifacts, and the things we got. Interesting. All right. So let's exit that run. Uh, we'll go back here and see I've got 14 mastery level again no idea what that uh, really means right now let's go to collection um, yeah I don't um, know all of these things so we definitely killed this one these are um, the different kind of bad guys we have I know they're still um I said working on getting this ready for release and pushing out so we got 1.5 percent of this chapter done I don't know if that's 1.5 percent of all the things uh, that we've discovered all of the artifacts and the beasts um or how that's gonna work Let's see if we want to unlock you have a hundred and a door stone to unlock Shinzo. So yeah, we got eight that last time. It looks like you need a hundred to unlock your uh, next uh, characters. Which will be interesting. I want to unlock Shinzo and see if he's gonna be at level five since I had already leveled him up. Um, or if since they locked him and, and changed him, he's gonna be at back at level one. Um, on that. So I don't know. Um, impossible. Enemies only play ultimate. That's uh, crazy. Um, so this is, uh, or this was, uh, Arcanium, Rise of Akan. And like I said, I know um, they're constantly making updates uh, doing that. I think the uh, latest information uh, was they're launching a uh, an alpha um, we're still in you know, pre-alpha here, an alpha launch sometime this month in December. Um, 
but I would say check it out if you uh, are interested in these kinds of things. It's um, got some um, elements of uh, Slay the Spire um, or uh, Monster Train, the other one that I've, I've run. Um, so it's kind of pulled from some of those elements. They've gone through a number of iterations on um, changing the system, the mechanics, um, and that. Like I said, I, these developers, I think, have been ref responsive to feedback and have done a really good job of um, making changes and making improvements um, with each change. So not just changing things to change things, but really to make it better and more balanced game and more interesting uh, game. With them. So, um, yeah, check it out. I, I say keep an eye on it, see what it's it's got. I would definitely put, um, I mean, I already put some my you know got the early access uh, to that i would definitely recommend you know put some money into it check it out uh support these guys they're doing a good job and uh like our videos comment uh subscribe and you know check out the other ones we've got until next time you guys have a good day and i will see you another time